In this demonstration, we'll be taking a look at the Transactions console of the LSS E64 accounting component. From this screen, you have access to any and all transactions that are in the accounting system. This includes uh, unposted, posted, accounts payable, general ledger, recurring entries, entries that have come from the time accounting system, and more. And everything's available in full detail. So if we look right up here under the basic search tab, you can see that we're currently viewing unposted accounts payable transactions. And in my sample system, I have three entries here waiting to be paid. If I wanted to view posted items, I would click here and we'd see a list of accounts payable transactions that have already been paid. I haven't paid anything in this system yet, so we don't see anything listed there. We'll go back to unposted. You can also choose to view general ledger transactions. These would be things like journal entries, uh, entries that have uh, interfaced from the time accounting system, uh, recurring accounts payable, or recurring general ledger. So everything's available right here. If your firm is a firm that uses batch numbers uh, to process transactions, you can search on a batch number. We don't use batch numbers, so I'm not going to be able to show you anything there. Or, if you wanted to see all transactions for a particular vendor, you could select the vendor, and it's now limited the results just to that one entry. You can also limit what is listed below by uh, selecting transaction date ranges or payment due date ranges. Uh, over here in the name description field, we can just type in uh, something that's contained in the name or the reference of an item and it narrows down the list to just those that match uh, on the word office. You can do things like uh, show only client expense advanced items or just non-client related items. You can also, for posted items, we'll go over to posted general ledger transactions. I have a couple out here. Um, we could search on a check number, just key in a check number, and if we slide over here we can see this one entry for check 123. So I'll clear that search and we'll go take a look at the advanced tab. Here you can further refine uh, the list of entries that is displayed by selecting things like general ledger account numbers, department numbers, offices, suffixes. You can even put in a, an amount range. So if you were looking specifically for an item that you knew was over a hundred dollars but less than two hundred dollars, you can do that and it narrowed down our list to this one entry here. You can search and display items that are associated with a particular client number, matter number, expense code from the billing system, uh, an invoice date, or an invoice number. I think I have an entry out here with this invoice number. And sure enough, it finds that one. You can even search for, and I'll show you how to attach these uh, invoices to transactions in a minute, but you can even search for the contents of attached invoices like PDFs that you attach to a transaction. Yeah, I'm going to search for red pens and this one item is found. And I'll go ahead and open it up so you can see what I'm talking about here. If I go over to the invoices and attachments, there's something attached to this transaction. I'll double click on it to open it and it brings up a copy of this invoice and you see right down here in the invoice itself there's the wording red pens. So we'll close all of this. Go back to our example here. Maybe I'll search for green pens. No, oh, I don't have any out there that contain green pens. So that's in a nutshell how you can search for and locate transactions in the system. Uh, the bottom part of the screen down here lists all the detail and as I showed you just a minute ago you can double click on an item to open up the transaction. You can open it up whether it's posted or unposted. Obviously if it's posted things are going to be locked down so you can't make any changes. However, you can on posted items 
um, do things like automatically create reversing entries. These haven't been posted, so that item's not enabled right now. But you can also uh, click on print check. So if you wanted to just print a check for one item or just a couple of items in this list, you could select them, right click and say print checks. You can print checks by batch. That's more of a traditional uh, check printing uh, method where you get a selection screen where you can pick date ranges and vendors and things like that. Another nice thing about this list of transactions is that you can sort them by any column you see here. And there's additional columns probably over on the right. And if any of these are more important to you, you can pick them up and, and drag them over to another location. So we can move this over after source. And now the, the columns that are most important to me show up over here on the left side and I don't have to slide over to the right. And the system's going to remember these settings. So you can adjust these columns, rearrange them, resort them. And when you exit the program, come back in, they're going to come up the way you left them uh, originally. Now if you find there's certain searches that you're performing regularly, rather than retyping the information and making selections down here, you can create favorites. These are like templates. And uh, using the example I did earlier about red pens, let's say I often have to search on red pens. So I'll go ahead and fill out uh, the search fields the way I want, get my results down here. I'm going to save that search, those search parameters by clicking on the add favorites. And I'm going to call this red pens unposted AP. Now that I've saved that as a favorite, anytime I want to run that search, I can just pick it from the drop down up, up here. So I'll clear the search so now we see everything. Click on red pens and now it just performed the search that limited it to attachments containing the words red and pens. And you can add as many of these favorites as you want and over on the favorites tab then you can manage your favorites so if I wanted to get rid of this uh, template I can choose delete or if I want to set it as the default so that every time I come into this screen it automatically runs the search on red pens I can mark it as as a default now this is this is consistent throughout LSS E64 you're gonna see that favorites option uh, throughout so while we're here, let's take a closer look at one of these transactions so that you can see some of the information uh, that LSS E64 uh, records for you. This is an unposted accounts payable, and it has an entry date of 316. It's scheduled to be paid on 316. It's a payment not related to a client. This is uh, where you can select things like trust disbursements, expense credits, um, client expenses advanced things that are going to be billed to a, a client. This is just a simple office cost. Vendor, um, description, name, address. Over on the invoices tab you can list any invoices associated with this accounts payable transaction as well as the attachments which I showed you earlier. Um, and you can, ha you can add up to 1,000 invoices per transaction if you needed to do something like that. Uh, over on the Matters tab, if this were a client expense uh, check that was going to be written, these fields would be enabled where you could list the client and the matter, the billing uh, code, the amounts, descriptions, all of the billing information that would be sent over to the time accounting side automatically. And you can add up to 1,000 matter transactions per uh, check request item. And then over on the account distribution tab, this is your general ledger accounting information. So we have listed the accounts payable account, the amount to credit, or the, the check amount, and uh, this will be posted to a miscellaneous supplies account, 4629, for that amount. And uh, on this tab, you can also add up to 1,000 account numbers uh, per transaction. So there's clearly more to general ledger and accounts payable than I've shown you in the last few minutes, but I hope 
if nothing else, this gives you a, a general idea of the kind of information that the system is capable of storing and uh, the ways that the system allows you to access that information. And we're working with a little system here with just a few transactions in it, but this system is going to be just as fast uh, and just as capable when you're dealing with 20 years worth of history and, and millions of transactions. We've already put it to the test uh, with real data, uh, so there's no concern with that. If you want to look at anything else in more detail, please give our office a call. Our number is 800-331-4122, and a project manager would be happy to spend some time uh, doing a live demonstration for you. Uh, thanks for watching.